Welcome to YouTubers Love Excel number 70. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook YouTubers Love Excel 67 to 71. Wow, this YouTuber asked a great question. He says, hey, I have a bunch of downloaded <coughs> player data from foxsports.com, sportsillustrated.com, and each one of these data sets ranks players differently. ESPN, CBS, and he says, I want to create an average. So for Larry Johnson, Sean Alexander, Frank Gore, he wants to create an average of all these different websites' rankings. Now the way he did it is painful. Oh no by hand. He did it all by hand. So he copied. Every time he found this person's name, he then copied and pasted all of the rankings. So uh, Willie Parker, there was a 7, a 6, a 7, a 9, and a 5, and 8. And then he came over here and created an average. But he copied and pasted all that. Now, um, what we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take each one of these sets, because all it is, each one of these sets has the same field names, rank, player, position, team, by. And actually, we only need these two. So all I did was I cut and pasted this first one, including the field names. And then for all the remaining ones, I just cut and pasted this, and I just placed them on top of each other. So on this sheet, I did a lot of, I, there's five tables, I think it is. So I cut and paste. And I got this big, huge list. So you can see these are the field names. And then one, two, this is the first data set all the way down to uh, 250, I think. And then, ah, and then it started the next one. So I just did some cutting and pasting. And that's only five times. Now, when I did the pivot table, oops, something bad happened. Each player had multiple entries. So instead of creating the average for each player, it actually had multiple entries. And it wasn't until I came back to this data set right here and clicked. Let's look at uh, this person right here. If I hit F2, no way. Look what's happening. There's a couple spaces. If you click up here in the formula bar, you could see there's two spaces. If I go to the very top here and uh, click there and hit F2, I can see, whoa, there's like three spaces. Uh, if I scroll way down to a different data set, uh, all right right here. Uh, click up here. It looks like there's one space. The problem is this one has one space. The one at the top had three spaces. And uh, the data analysis features in Excel think that those are different. One space is not the same as two space. Further, if you go down here, there's lots of this guy's uh, name entry like right here where there's no spaces. There's just no spaces. So the pivot table and other data analysis features will think of this as a different name than the same name with an extra space. Well, luckily, there's a function built in. And we're just going to add a new field right over here. A new field. Actually, we're not going to. We're just going to uh, use the trim function. So I'm going to click in this cell equals trim. This function is great. If you type your name in, it'll give you a haircut. No, no, no. If you type in your name and the weight you are currently at and the weight you'd like to be at, it'll put you on a diet. And no, no, that's not what it does. Trim function, it takes any text and gets rid of all the spaces, except for the spaces between names. This is it. You know, these functions, you, when you first learn about these functions, you're like, why would anyone build a function like that? Here it is, because data analysis features doesn't like those extra spaces, and the trim function will take them out. Control Enter, and then I'm going to use my double click trick. I'm going to double click and send it all the way down. Now, that's like 900 records. If I click here and Control Down Arrow, uh-oh, there's a, uh-oh, look at that. So when I pasted this data, uh-oh, look at that. So I'm going to have to uh, do a little trick here, uh, and that's why you check it. I'm going to highlight this column and then right click hide. No way. Now if I double click, no way. That is so cool. Uh, if you hide a column, it's as if the double click with the fill handle trick, it's as if uh, it's, it's, the column is really not there. But now we can expand, highlight E and G, and then right click unhide. And sure enough, the column will come back. But let's click in this column right here and control down arrow. And sure enough, oh, there's another situation. Oh, look, there's a space there. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna highlight D E F and then right click hide. Now I'm gonna click there and then double click and send it down. Let's see if I can get down to the bottom. I'm gonna click right there and control down arrow. And sure enough, we make it down to the, wow, that's a lot of records there. 
Now I'm going to control home to jump to the top. And now I can click between C and G and right click unhide. And now what I need to do is I need to take this perfect uh, uh, set of names here and highlight it and then copy and paste special values here and then our pivot table work. I'm going to click on the top cell and control shift and down arrow. Now uh, there's lots of ways to paste special. I could just control C for copy and then click right here and go up to home this and paste special values. In 2003, you have to go to the edit menu and then paste special and values. But watch this, I got to show you an amazing trick. Um, if I click here and control shift down arrow and then scroll back up, there's a pretty cool trick here for paste special. If I point to the edge and instead of left clicking, I'm going to right click any one of these edges, right click. When you see your move cursor, then you can right click and drag. I'm right clicking and holding it down very tightly. And when I finally see the gray box exactly in the right position, I let go and what happens? A little context sensitive menu pops up. Copy here as values only. And there it is. You can see just it jumped a little bit, which meant this um, no longer has those spaces at the end. And if you double click it, you can even prove it to yourself. Remember, that one had like two or three spaces. Now I'm going to click in this column. I'm going to right click this whole column, right click it, and point to delete because we don't want it. Now I'm going to click in this pivot table, right? I mean, this data set, uh, and uh, do a pivot table. In 2003, you have to go to the data menu pivot table. In 2007, you go to insert pivot tables. In uh, and then I'm going to click on that pivot table. Now I want to make sure. Oh, look, it did get so B12 all the way to F112. So it got the right set of data. Now existing worksheet. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to very carefully click in cell H. 12 and then click OK. Now this is once the hard part was doing that trim and replacing the data. We just simply drag player to the rows and it'll give us a unique list and then player um, a rank to the values here. Notice it says sum so we don't want that. I want to go look at the table. I'm going to close this field list and now I'm going to come over here. Oh it's summing. I don't want that. I'm going to right click somewhere in the value era, area and point to and I have to scroll up so you can see this. Right click and point to value field settings. Remember, this is the value area. These are fields, so the field settings will allow us to change the function. And sure enough, I'm going to click on average, and sure enough, it even changes a name for us, and click OK. And so very quickly, you could see that we have a unique list of uh, items and if we scroll down we can see that one guy whatever his name is in the L's he should be ranked number one because there's a bunch of uh, there it is right there so number one alright so that's how to take uh, a bunch of data sets combine them and deal with a bad data issue which is very common when you're dealing with data and then doing a pivot table to calculate the average rank for each player alright we'll see you next trick